did a young Nina Hagen inspired look so I figured this would be a good time to talk about uh, the topic of egos and punks and please this is not a video essay this is not supposed to come across as uh, well researched or well structured um, this is really just kind of a ramble from my perspective of how I view the whole ego um, phenomenon as well as where I place myself, specifically in punk. I'm going to get a lot more into detail later on in the video about um, my place in punk. So if you are a person of the internet, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about when I talk about egos. Um, I would classify them as generally alternative looking, um, young women on the internet and there's kind of a whole culture around it. I would also say, I would also generally say tentatively that the ego look is generally pretty store-bought um, or as I'll get into talking about a little later on, pretty structured. I'm sorry if you can hear the weather, the wind is gusting which is why this little one has joined me, he's a little bit stressed out. So the thing that I kind of really want to say about e-girls in this video and the reason that I bring them up is because um, I have been described as an e-girl or as e-girl adjacent or e-girl leaning <laughs> or compared to uh, e-girls and I, I understand why. <laughs> um, I don't really identify with the label, I'm not even really sure if it's the sort of label that people generally do identify with. Um, like I feel like eagle is more a label that is put on you than a label that people generally put on themselves. Although I think that's where the whole ego thing gets a bit of a bad rap is because um, oftentimes these very store-bought alternative people will brand themselves as being um, goth or punk or some other specific subculture and then you know, people who have been in that subculture for years and years and years get a bit offended. So, I mean, e-girls catch a lot of flack. I totally forgot that I was supposed to be wearing lipstick with this look, wow. Continuity flaw, but whatever. <laughs> but I do just feel like I want to defend e-girls. Because I think that we as a society have a long history of like just not letting young women do their thing <laughs> and um, I think this is just a way that young alternative girls are expressing themselves and young girls are expressing themselves um, and I think that you know these women are and people are um, you know really interesting and fully formed human beings and I think that if we weren't so busy memifying them and bothered to listen to what they're interested in and what they stand for, then um, I think we would see them as a lot more legitimate and I think, you know, they have as much to offer as any subculture. So there's that and now I'm going to talk a bit about where I position myself in the kind of alternative scene. I have come to like see myself as being a punk. Um, but there are a lot of complications around that, um, and I'm gonna get into why. And to do that, I have to take a long step back many, many years to when I was very young and growing up. And the fact is that I lived in a very small town in South Africa. <laughs> the alternative scene in South Africa, like, barely exists now even. Um, there are small pockets of alternative people in whichever city you go to, maybe one bar or um, one cluster of bars. And everyone in the scene, like around the country, kind of knows each other or, you know, is friends of friends with each other. 
So when I was growing up, I had zero exposure or almost zero exposure to anything alternative at all. I had absolutely no way of finding or accessing alternative music. I wouldn't have known where to find it. I would have had no way to find it. I did not have a phone that had an internet connection for until uh, probably high school. Um, we mostly shared music via Bluetooth <laughs> and so you ended up with, or I, I ended up with, you know, maybe 10 songs on my phone. I know I had an mp3 player that had 52 songs on it and most of them were Avril Lavigne and to be honest that's where, that was my first like alternative influence. And also other than just the music, no one was dressing alternative, again South African context so I feel like all of the um, alternative and, and like punk scene folk that I know um, online are from like the US or the UK where like school rules aren't really that big of a thing I feel and you know some people have been experimenting with hair and makeup and dyeing their hair and getting piercings or whatever from the time they were like 12 years old and yeah I know it wouldn't have been impossible for me to be like the lone punk in my town um, but that's just not the way that the story unfolded um, I didn't have access to influences and I was also, as a, as a child, I was very scared of getting into trouble. And I did care quite a bit, and obviously still do, about um, people liking me. But I do know that what small sneak peeks I got into alternative subcultures, I loved. Like, if I found one song, like if one song came across my little small town radar, I would grab it and hold it close. <laughs> and um, when I started to get into Tumblr and stuff like that, you know, seeing like alternative girls and their beautiful hair colors and different facial piercings and like crazy makeup, I was enamored with it. And I've spoken about this before in my um, Style Evolution video. And it was always something that I dreamed about being able to do, is like expressing myself in this cool alternative way that I'd seen online. I mentioned Avril Lavigne already, I also remember coming across um, We The Kings, that Check Yes Juliet song, <laughs> um, as well as I remember I heard a cover of the song Toxic by Britney Spears, um, covered by the band A Static Lullaby. <laughs> probably the first time that I heard like screamo vocals um, or hardcore vocals hardcore but yeah I always I always felt like I was like I found a sound that I like and then I wanted more but I didn't know how I didn't know where to go I didn't know where to look so I think I've rambled enough about my past and that's just for context um, but my point is that my past and my lack of exposure to like punk influence when I was younger had an hasn't has had an effect on like every part of my punk identity and my like identity in general. Um, and I guess now I'll get into talking about those categories specifically. So I guess starting with music, um, it's it. It doesn't feel good to admit, <laughs> but it's also not something that I ever try to hide. I don't listen to punk music in my spare time, for the most part. <laughs> and I know that like, m like 9 out of 10 punks at this point are like, okay, well, sweetie honey baby, you aren't a punk if you don't listen to punk music. And I don't know, man. <laughs> um, it's, it's not like I hate punk music, I, I love punk music, um, it's not that I never listen to punk music, I listen to some punk music, it's just not what I reach for, it's not my favourite genre of music. I listen to a lot of indie pop. I wasn't like well initiated into listening to punk music at a young age, and I feel like I missed out on all of those years where you are you know, listening to things and then branching out. 
I I can't branch out if I never had, you know, any roots planted. So it's led to me feeling just like it's all a bit much. Like there's just a lot out there and everybody has very strong, well-formed opinions that they've, you know, come to over a number of years. And so it's kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. But in general, I mean, I'm not, I'm not interested in pretending that I'm way into something that I'm not into, just for like punk cred, you know. But I'm really grateful for my punk friends who have introduced me to all different things. Um, I love being around my punk friends and listening to the music that they play. However, I will say that the the thing for me is like how much of a damn I give about the live alternative music scene. Like that's just that's just where it's at for me. Um, just like seeing your friends, um, your favorite artists, just cool bands who represent, you know, how you feel on stage, jumping around with people, moshing, headbanging, um, and and it, the live music scene in that way has become really important to me over the last two or three years. I have so much respect for the artists that are keeping the alternative music scene going in South Africa. You know, for like having a talent, honing that craft, then working together with a group of other people who do the same thing in a cohesive way, and then putting on a show, you know, to bring your scene together, I, it, it's just so commendable and I will never stop supporting <laughs> that. And I think my friends in the scene will, you know, acknowledge me as a very supportive neo groupie fan of the scene. The whole shebang, I love it so much. <laughs> <coughs> Let's talk about punk style next. Punk style as well is something that like when I see punks being punks, punks dressed as punks, um, it like really lights a twinkle in my eye. The thing is that I'm interested in a lot of different fashion subcultures and uh, styles. I could never commit to just one for my whole life. I love experimenting. Um, I love taking inspiration from different avenues of style and then trying them out for myself. And yeah, punk style is super inspiring to me. I love like the whole ethos behind it. It's kind of slapped together and ripped apart and you know, held together and DIY'd and it's got so much personality in it and it's so political as well. Just like firstly being willing to be like, I don't look like you <laughs> um, and I will dress how I want and I don't care if it looks ugly. But then also like, you know, patches and uh, making actual political statements with your with the way that you look as well as the way that you act. The hair, the makeup, um, the clothing, I love it. <laughs> and I definitely draw on punk values when I dress myself all the time. Once again, I'm not interested in pretending to be the same punk that Oh, I don't want to come across sounding really hipstery. What I'm saying is that I, I'm i not trying to fake it. <laughs> I'm not trying to, like, I haven't conjured up this idea of what a punk looks like in my head and then tried to be that. Because I feel like punk is so much about being yourself. So, like, I have one of my punk jackets here. And um, maybe I could do a full little tour for you guys at some point of my two uh, decorated punky jackets. But, like... <laughs> you know, it's not what you would, you know, stereotypically think of as being punk. 
It's got mushroom on it. Um, hand stitched patch, hand embroidered stuff um, that I've been working on during lockdown. But it's me, you know. It's DIY. It makes a statement, but it's me. It's colorful and weird and cutesy and kind of girly. And I, I, I'm not interested in pretending to be not that, you know? But I also don't feel like that disqualifies me. <laughs> if anything, I feel like it qualifies me um, from having a place in the punk scene. I feel like this is coming across really defensive. Maybe it is, I don't know. Ah, but I was gonna say that um, I, I see kind of like an axis of fashion um, as like one spectrum from grunge to structured. These are the two words that I have in mind where um, I think you could definitely see punk as being like way way on the, the grunge side of things. It's fallen apart a little, it's not perfect. Um, and then on the other end you have structured, which I feel like my style in general falls into the more structured category. I do follow some rules um, of my own in my brain about colour and texture and silhouette. I, my outfits tend to be pretty cohesive. I think most people would look at my outfits and think, you know, that's well put together. Not to say that grungy outfits aren't well put together. I'm just saying that they are two kind of different approaches. And it is something that I do still think about. Um, just like constantly thinking about if I'm dressing for myself. I have found it really liberating over the last year or two um, to sometimes look ugly. <laughs> And just acknowledging that you don't always have to look pretty. You don't have to always have to look one particular kind of person's pretty um, to feel good and to take up space. And then to talk a little bit about punk ideology, I'm not going to get too, too much into it. I was already pretty left-leaning by the time I left high school. As my, my politics naturally changed and radicalized, and leftified <laughs> more and more as I came to find myself in the punk scene. You know, it all fit really well. Which leads me also into the idea of a punk lifestyle. So ideas that I um, associate with punk in my head, like living off the grid, <laughs> um, living in a squat, living out your car not so much putting the idea of having a career <laughs> on a pedestal not so much looking forward to participating in capitalism these are all things that i theoretically could genuinely see myself doing <laughs> i know that that sounds shocking um and i'm a little bit tentative when it comes to things like we sometimes feel really um, disillusioned into thinking that there's only one way to do life and that you have to sell your soul to the system cooperate or die yeah again I'm really appreciative of the punk people and alternative lifestyle people that I know who have turned society's expectations on their head and just done whatever they want to do with their lives I find that really inspiring and I I feel like we'd be worse off if we didn't have access to ideas like that. So, in conclusion, <laughs> this whole video has been one long ramble towards me being like, um, I feel generally a bit like annoyed and put out by the fact that I feel I have to justify identifying as a punk so hard <laughs> but also like if people see me as an e-girl then okay e-girls are cool 
they're doing their thing we need to let them be <laughs> or y'all need to let us be however this pans out but also excuse you can you hear him snoring <laughs> baby so this has just been kind of a a chat describing why and how i've come to identify with punk as a an ideology a lifestyle <laughs> i think that there should be a place for people like me and all different kinds of people in punk although punks that i know tend to be pretty progressive i think that the scene could definitely do with some diversifying and um you know we should definitely be directing our attention to uh people of color different sexualities and gender identities um doing their thing in the punk scene and let me know what you think in the comments below <laughs> if you like this video you can give it a thumbs up if you like me and want to see more from my channel you can click the subscribe button down below and i'm making new videos kind of pretty regularly now i guess <laughs> thanks for watching everybody i love you bye mm -hmm.